Hello, welcome to the first tutorial for the lounge. Here, we will guide you to the realization of a STEM project. The STEM is a new feature available for the first time on Ketron Lounge. Before you start bringing your project to life, however, it is imperative that we explain what STEM means before anything else. The STEM is a new detailed menu where you can place audio files which can be managed to your needs and satisfaction during a live performance. This will allow you to play an audio song with a freedom never thought possible until now. Before we get too deep into things, I will try to give you a quick idea of STEM's capabilities so that you can immediately understand the possibilities and how to use this great tool in your performances. Let's start by giving some examples using one of the songs in our repertoire. As you know, a song usually consists of the following basic components. An introduction, a verse, a chorus, maybe some special part of the song, and an ending. We know that when an audio piece starts, we are forced to play the whole song. This obviously applies when we talk about audio, because in MIDI, there is another kind of flexibility called the marker function, which is available in the lounge, of course. Imagine that we have the opportunity to change the structure of a song as previously described. If we assume that this structure consists of an intro, two verses, a chorus, a special, and an ending, but in the performance we would need to, for example, repeat the chorus many times so that we can shorter a verse, how could this be achieved? Here comes the stem function. As we can see from the picture, the lounge has four scenes in this menu. These four scenes could represent the structure of the song. For example, scene A could be intro and special, scene B could be verse and scene, C could be chorus and scene, and D would be the end. I think at this point it begins to become clear what this great feature can do. It goes without saying that the user at this point can jump from one scene to another very easily because there is a clear picture in a song which you can convert live through a very simple function. Now let's move on and see what we need to do in detail. As you can see, we have the file available. We have selected only one of the most played songs of the Piano Bar repertoire in WAV format 16-bit 44kHz stereo. As you know, these can be found on the web files in different formats, WAV, MP3, FLAC, etc. The important thing is that we can then finalize the file in WAV. Once we have this file, we need to create a folder of our song and our project, which we will name and note down the final BPM tempo. This is important because the instrument will recognize the original speed from the initial BPM and then deal with it for the various phases of transpose and time stretching. Once the folder is created, we move to the audio editor we have and of course we can select any program we want. The first thing to do is to identify on a visual reference level the various points of the song which we will identify, as we said before, the intro, verse, chorus, special, and the end. And we will put on some markers, which will serve as a reminder so that we can identify the various separate sections and easily save them. Now we're just listening to the verse. And that was the closing point of the verse. Then we go to place the marker exactly in the final area of the verse to clarify the area, and then we have to copy it. Once that is done, let's create the chorus area. In the same way, after the endpoint is located, we put this bookmark called Marker. We will do the same for the special. We identify the duration that is known to differ from song to song.
With the same method, we will select the end, i.e. the end of the song. Once this is done, obviously all the audio regions will be very easily identifiable, so that we can then save them with a specific name in the folder we created earlier. Now let's see the end. So, now we start to select the different regions. This is the import, and we are going to save it in the folder we created before. Here, we give the name intro. The storage format should obviously be 16-bit, 44 kilohertz, stereo wave. We will do the same for the region related to verse. Chorus. The special. And finally, the ending. At this point, we go to the folder where we have saved the WAV files, which we exported, and delete the files such as those that are virtual, that is, created by the audio editor, and have no utility in the project. We now connect the lounge via USB to our computer. Let's take the folder by right-clicking the mouse using the copy function, and then we find the, the stem folder from the internal memory of the lounge. And through the stem folder, we will select WAVE, where we will paste the folder that contains the whole project with the WAV files we just created. Now we find this folder. Let's disconnect and go directly to the lounge to create the final project. So, for verification, let's just look at the stem folder, the WAV folder. The folder that was created is the girl underscore 142 with the files we can see. Let's get into stem mode and create our new project. Select the first box where immediately to the right, the folders will appear with the available files that exist in the stem slash WAV folder. And then selecting the one we want, we enter the WAV files by clicking with the touch screen on each wave we are interested in importing. Now let's move on to scene B. Let's open the file again and let's go get the verse. Scene C. Also from the same folder, we get the chorus. And finally scene D where we put the end. At this point, we press the save button and save the work named the girl and go to listening mode. Now practically, from scene one, we turn off the special and listen to the introduction alone. Now, if we decide to move on to the second verse, we will listen to the verse. Once the file starts, we can switch from one scene to another with great ease. Now let's move on to the chorus, scene C. We can operate transpose, for example. We can change the key of the song while it is playing. And of course, we can also return to scene B, where we have the verse that we decide to sing again, for example. This obviously allows us to decide in real time the duration of a part of a song, so that we can proceed from the relevant scene in the verse and then remove the second part and go directly to the chorus. Now let's move on to the end. From the verse, without going through the chorus, we go to the end until the piece ends. Otherwise, we will block it. This is to give us the opportunity to interact with the song and develop it during the performance in the way that remains more enjoyable. This is a very simple way that just serves to stimulate the idea a bit and make you understand the potential of this stem. Then there is another system that we call advanced, 
where instead of just placing blocks of a song, we can place them, seeing that in each scene there are five boxes available for separate tracks. But we will see that in a later tutorial. We hope that by this point, some of your doubts or questions will be cleared up and will give you the urge to start editing your music resources. See you in the next tutorial.